Tabati explains it this way. When the day came upon Abraham and the sun rose, he saw the greatness of the sun and saw that here was something with more light than he had ever seen before. He said, This is my Lord, this is greater. And when it set, he exclaimed, O oh my people, I am free from all the things which you associate with him. Mohammed wants us to believe that all it took to free this 15-month-old baby from pagan idolatry, worshipping the sun, moon, and stars, to become a Muslim in the oneness of Allah, was for the sun to set. Quran 6, verse 80. His people disputed with him. What people? Depending upon whether you believe Muhammad's hadith or Allah's Quran, he's with his mom or dad. He is a toddler, having just emerged from a cave for the first time. He said, Do you dispute with me respecting Allah? He has guided me. I do not fear those that you set up with him, unless my Lord pleases. My Lord comprehends all things. Will you not mind? Let me see if I can decipher this. Over the course of one brief conversation, dishonest Abe tells his father that he and his people are in manifest error, and that idolatry is bad. After visiting heaven, he says that big, bright, shiny things are gods, and that he's not a polytheist. Then he disputes with people he has never seen about their religion. He even says that he doesn't fear their gods, unless, of course, his god wants him to fear them. And wouldn't you know it? After such drivel, he tells them to mind him. This Quranic passage destroys the Islamic myth of divine inspiration. For this is not some minor event in the life of Islam. Abraham is purported to be the religion's founder, and this is his moment of awakening. Quran 6 verse 81 Why should I fear what you have set up with Allah? that for which he has not sent down to you any authority. We can only assume that the Abababe is speaking of idols his people have erected in shrines like the Kaaba. O oh, my father, why do you worship that which neither hears nor sees, nor can in any way help you? Even something as simple as this indicts Mohammed. It's a rip-off. As we shall see in upcoming chapters, Arabian Hanifs, which were monotheists during Muhammad's day, had it figured out. They had said of the rock idols of the Kaaba, Why do you worship that which neither hears nor sees, nor can help you in any way? Do you reject my gods, Abraham? If you do not cease this, I shall stone you. As sick as this sounds, it depicts Muslim behavior. If a son renounces Islam, his father will kill him. One of my friends, a former Muslim, had this very thing happened to him. Hearing the news, his loving father reached for his gun and fired it at his son, narrowly missing him. Mark Gabriel, who holds a Ph.D. in Islamic history, wrote a book about his experience called Islam in Terror. Quran 6, verse 83. And this was our argument which we gave to Abraham against his people, and we gave him Ishak, Isaac, and Yaqub, Jacob, Oops, Abraham was given Isaac and Ishmael. Jacob came later. Each did we guide, and Nu, Noah, did we guide before, and of his descendants, David and Solomon, and Job and Joseph and Moses and Aaron, and thus do we reward those who do good, following Muhammad's example in the Sunnah. And Zechariah and Yaha, who is John, Isa, who is Jesus, and Elias, Every one was of the good, i.e., they were Muslims, and Ishmael and Elijah and Jonah and Lot and every one we preferred above men and jinn. One of the many problems with the Quran is that Allah was no brighter than Muhammad. Job was a Gentile and a contemporary of Abraham. As such, he could neither be Abe's descendant nor follow Solomon. I am reasonably certain that the Yathrib Jews read their scriptures correctly to Muhammad. But having a poor memory and a heinous agenda, he got them all fouled up. I don't say that to be mean-spirited, just informative. Muhammad will convict himself of having a heinous agenda a thousand times over before we're through. As prophets go, he was pretty pathetic. Returning to the Islamicized Abraham, even Ishak tells us, Tabari, Then Abraham returned to his father Azar, having seen the right course, 
he had recognized his Lord. Actually, all he had done was recognize who his Lord wasn't. And while that might sound picky, that's all Muhammad really did. Ultimately, he promoted the largest of the Meccan rock idols, Allah, and denounced the rest. He was free of the religion of his people, but he did not tell them that. This, too, is revisionism for the sake of Muhammad. Allah's messenger kept quiet about his first revelation for several years. One of the most repetitive and damning indictments in the Quran comes from the Meccans. They recognize that Muhammad's notion of casting the smaller Kaaba idols aside so that the largest idol could be feared as the one true God was pure lunacy. A big stone was no more God than a bunch of little ones. Ishak, every house had an idol. When Allah sent Muhammad with the message of monotheism, the Quraysh said, Would he make many gods into one? This is a strange thing. Muhammad, ever in character, changed the story of the great Hebrew patriarch Abraham to make his behavior seem inspired. This sorry tale is chronicled in both the Hadith and Quran. Tabari. His father told him, Abraham, we have a festival. If you go to it, you will learn to like our religion. The festival came, and they went to it. On the way, Abraham threw himself down and said, I am sick, my foot hurts. When they went away, he called to the last of them, I shall deal with your idols after you have gone away and turned your backs. Abraham went to the house of the gods, which was in a great hall. Opposite the entrance was a great idol, and at his side a smaller one, and next to him a smaller one, and so on. Too bad Allah didn't get out more. He would have known that in Abraham's day the temple of Ur housed just one god, Sin, a masculine moon deity like himself. Unlike the Kaaba, there weren't a bunch of rock idols lying around. Azar made a living making the idols which his people worshipped, and he employed Abraham to sell them. Abraham would call out, Who will buy what will be no use to him? So they became unsellable. He would take them to the river and point their heads at it and say, Drink, mocking his people. At length his mocking spread about among the inhabitants of his town, although Nimrod did not hear of it. Then, when the time seemed right to Abraham to reveal to his people the error of what they were doing, and to tell them of Allah's command of how to pray, he glanced up at the stars and said, I feel sick. They fled from him when they heard it, but Abraham had only said it to make them go away, so that he could do what he wanted with their idols. When they left, he went to the idols and brought them food. He said, Will you not eat? What is the matter? Why don't you speak? Reproaching their falsely elevated position and mocking them. If you've got one, open your Quran to the 37th surah. So as not to take Allah's word out of context, let's read from the beginning, picking up the highlights as we go along. Seeing Allah as he really is will help elucidate the Islamic mystery. The peace-loving God tells his troops, By those angels arranged in battle ranks who are strong in repelling and thus proclaim the message of Allah, verily your Illah, or God, is one. Thank God for small favors. Quran 37, verse 6. We have decked the lower heavens with stars to protect them against all rebellious evil spirits and provide security from every forward devil. So they cannot listen to the highest chiefs, for they are pelted from every side, repulsed. They are under a perpetual torment, being driven off, except such as they snatch away something by stealth, but they are pursued by flaming fire of piercing brightness." In Islam, according to the Quran, stars are used to guard against forward devils. The Islamic Illah, God, named Allah, would have us believe that he dissuades and torments evil spirits with physical objects. Quran 37, verse 11. Just ask their opinion, Muhammad. Whose opinion? The stars? The rebellious evil spirits? Are they the more difficult to create, or are other beings we have created? Them have we created out of sticky clay. Are they stronger as a creation? Truly dost thou marvel while they ridicule. <laughs> Nay, I dust both marvel and ridicule. Quran 37, verse 13. 
When they are admonished, pay no heed. When they see a sign, they turn it into mockery, and incite one another and scoff, and say, this is nothing but evident sorcery. I agree.